Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Checklist, the show that's not really a checklist, but hey, it comes out on a Tuesday and I'm a glass half full kind of guy, so let's go. This week, Devil May Cry 5 arrives on PS4 and I love Devil May Cry. Despite the fact that if a pro DMC player witnessed me playing it, they'd probably be sick in their own shoes. But that doesn't stop me, and nor should it. With that in mind, here we are talking about games we know we're not particularly brilliant at, but that we love playing anyway. I'm up first because it's Devil May Cry, and I can't wait. I know I'm not the best Devil May Cry player in the world, <laughs> and uh, I'm hey, perfectly you're okay. I'm perfectly happy admitting that. Um, I love Devil May Cry, I would consider myself a Devil May Cry fan, um, but I'm sure if people who were really good at Devil May Cry saw me playing Devil May Cry, they, they would have cry. a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> they would cry. It's, uh, it's one of those games that, you know, you have, it's like, you know that meme on the internet is like what you ordered on blah 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 yeah. and what turned up on yeah. blah blah blah. It's like yes. Um, so for me it would be like yeah. what I think I look like when I'm playing Devil May Cry basically yeah. versus what I actually look like when I play Devil May Cry are two very different things. Uh, but I remember first playing Devil May Cry, uh, I think it was 2001 it came out on PS2. So the Matrix was very fresh in my mind. And anything that had combat and cool music, basically, to me, oh, it's like The Matrix. <laughs> and so uh, I first... Did you have a trench coat at this time? I had I had a black leather coat. It wasn't a trench coat. Right. I wanted it to be a trench coat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I couldn't find one in Debenhams, and that was as far as <laughs> I went. Oh, Debenhams. Um, <laughs> uh, but the first time I discovered that in Devil May Cry, you could leap in the air and then leap off an enemy's blade that it had thrown at you, again and do like another yeah. backwards leap off that and then start shooting them in midair and sort of slow motion like it does it does this cool thing devil may cry where it's not slow motion but it sort of suspends you yeah so if you're in the air shooting you won't fall very quickly so yeah. it's sort of fake slow motion in a way and you can slice an enemy up in the air and whilst they're just hanging there you can slash at them and shoot at them yeah and they won't fall down realistically and it lends itself to incredibly cinematic looking combat sequences but you do have to be it's not one of those games where you can just mash the button and look brilliant you you have to know what you're doing to make it look good yeah. and when i started out i did a couple of things accidentally that looked good i was like oh my god this is great and so in my head i had this vision of me being brilliantly balletic and you know, Matrix style cool at Devil May Cry yeah. to the point where I'd be getting my sister or my friend who'd come over, like, look at look at this amazing game. Oh, this game's so good. You look so cool in it. And really what I was doing was just not very impressive at all. <laughs> I had a friend called Matt who was obsessed with Devil May Cry, like absolutely obsessed with it to the point where he completed it on Dante Must Die mode, which is, if you don't know what Dante Must Die mode is, you can sort of get the idea from the name of the mode. It's really, really hard. Um, and I went round to his house and saw him playing it and instantly realised I was not very good at Devil May Cry. <laughs> <laughs> it was just relentless. Just the relentless... I mean, obviously, he obviously had the memory in his thumbs for how you're supposed to play that game. You, you yeah. can tell he wasn't thinking about what he was doing. He was just feeling what he was doing. So, okay, now I need to do that. And now the enemy's up there. I need to do this move. And watching a pro play Devil May Cry um, was eye-opening. But I don't really care that I'm, you know, I'm sort of that person who will get an A rank or a B rank at the end of a mission and be like, yeah. I will play through Devil May Cry on Devil Hunter mode, which is like normal difficulty. I played through the first one on easy difficulty because I couldn't beat Phantom, the first boss. Notoriously difficult first boss, Phantom. And uh, Devil May Cry sort of sarcastically offers you the chance to lower the difficulty if you lose four or five times to Phantom. Right. Would you like to play the game on You Suck difficulty? <laughs> yes, please, I yes, would. Please, and so I, I finished the first Devil May Cry on the easiest difficulty setting um, and still had loads of fun with it. Like, you know, it's still a brilliant, brilliant action game. I'm massively excited. To, to start my adventure with Devil May Cry 5, having had hands-on with it already. 
Um, I know I'm not going to be getting S ranks on the game. I'm not going to be platinuming the game. If a pro player looked at me playing the game and, or looked at my footage that's on our channel right now, they're probably going to be like, oh, you could have got someone good to play the game. Oh, <laughs> oh. I love that you always got that voice. It, it pains me. <laughs> Same voice. I'm in physical pain watching this game play. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, I, I, I don't really care if I'm not that good at it. I love the game anyway. I will play it my own clumsy way, occasionally accidentally looking brilliant on one of the easier difficulty settings and I'll get B rank through the whole lot and have a brilliant, brilliant time. B for brilliant time. <laughs> my game then. My entry this week is uh, kind of like uh, a comfort game. It was a, it was a comfort game of mine for about two years. Uh, funnily enough, you know on uh, I think a few months ago there was a, a kind of a thing you could do where you could put in your PSN name and it generated like some stats about your PS4 gameplay, yes. the first game you played, the first trophy oh, you yeah, won. Oh yeah, the PS4 life thing. And this was the game that I had played the most hours of and it surprised me. On all PS4 games? Out of all PS4 games. It's because it was my comfort game for about two years and it was FIFA. It was FIFA. FIFA. <laughs> yeah, that's right, they have shocked you. FIFA. I Where played a lot of FIFA uh, badly. <laughs> um, and FIFA, you know, FIFA has an eSports league. FIFA you can be a professional in. So I think that I have, you know, I've the, I, this is the right game for me to talk about because in no way do I play it like a, a professional. The thing is, it's funny to me that I really like FIFA because I don't especially like football. You know, like I kind of quite badly support Spurs. Uh, Quite badly. I will. <laughs> I'll support. Uh, Did they win? I'll support I England them. a bit more when England are playing. Uh, only if it's you know not just a friendly or something. I can't be bothered with any of that. But you know, when, when a big when a t World Cup or the Euros turn come around, then I'll get I'll get behind England. But apart from that, I'm not really massively into football. So I don't know what it is about FIFA that kind of uh, struck a chord with me. But I find it massively comforting. The mode that I used to play though. I mean, I play all of it quite badly because I don't know much about football. Um, but sort of even more mad than that is I do a kind of a ma the manager mode. So you manage your team. You still get to play the matches. Being a manager is a nightmare. It's it's not worth it, guys. It's not worth it. <laughs> the number of emails I get from disgruntled players who are like, <laughs> you didn't play me again this week. Be God. better then. I'm like, well, yes, because you're only like 72. When Steve over there, 78, of course I'm going to play Steve. Every game is important. <laughs> Steve's really tired. Yes, well, he's still better than you. Uh, and tired that's, Steve is better than you. That's why I'm bad at FIFA, just the actual gameplay mode, and, and manager mode, because this career mode, because, um, you know, FIFA wants you to play. You, sometimes you have to play the less good players. Sometimes you have to give you know, your best players a break and they have to recuperate and you have to try out different tactics and you have to balance, well, if I can't play that player, maybe I'll adjust the formation. No, I am like <laughs> arcade mode. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just want to just, I do, all I'm doing is trying to play the games. The, the, the other bits, I don't understand. If it's not, you know, 442, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't know anything and I'm playing it incredibly badly but I'm still having loads of fun the stupid thing that I did was I and I have done this in FIFA's throughout the years is I've started always started with um, Bristol City as my team managing Bristol City only because I was born near Bristol <laughs> <laughs> um, and to be honest after you know two years of playing with Bristol City and maybe maybe getting promoted once and struggling then, just struggling in the bottom. It's not that much fun. <laughs> it's not that much fun. Uh, and I think that's probably the wrong way to play uh, FIFA. When you go online eventually, you know, it's just like end-to-end -end people playing with Barcelona and Real Madrid and Manchester City and... Yeah, but I bet they couldn't get Bristol City promoted, could they? They probably couldn't. I only just did. But I tell you what they can do, and that's all manner of skill moves. <laughs> which <laughs> I've got no skill moves under my, under my belt. If it's not in the kind it's of like... you're using Bristol City players. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this is what I mean. I'm playing FIFA incredibly badly. But I think it uh, speaks to what a kind of 
great game FIFA is that you can play it like that, you know, you can not even like football that much like me and there's still quite a lot to be had in there. And it's so slick and uh, enjoyable to kind of on the eyes um, that you can totally get away with it. And yes, um, I, if I played with a professional, they'd probably be sick if they, either mode, whether it was career mode or just like some online play, they'd probably destroy me. Um, but it doesn't matter, I'm having fun with it and that's all that all that matters. And although I think next career mode I start, I can't do Bristol City again. I think I'll just, I should just go with Spurs. Spurs won't let me down. Right, it's time to talk about Driver. Oh. Does anyone know, know Driver? Yeah, Driver. Yeah, Driver and Driver 2. Yes. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, it's Driver San Francisco as well on the PS3, which is great. But I'm talking about Driver 1 specifically. And looking back with this with like, the glasses of nostalgia, I can see that I was completely wrong about everything I thought about Driver. Because in my head, it's two very distinct game modes. One of the game modes is like free roam, where you kind of drive this car around this cardboardy, empty city, and that's it, that's the whole game. You can't get out of the car, You can't can get you? out of the car, too. there's no pedestrians, so you might see another car like every couple of minutes. It's not called <laughs> Walker, is it? <laughs> it was good fun though, I had a good time playing it. And there's this, this other side of the game, which, to my knowledge, is just a driving test that is un unwinnable. <laughs> oh, is this a tutorial? The tutorial, so the tutorial it's the, in the garage? So now I understand, looking back on it, that it was a tutorial to a campaign that probably lasted for hours and was great fun. <laughs> but all I ever saw it was, was as you being in a multi-story car park with a very angry man sat next to you, <laughs> and, a, and a list of things you had to achieve in 60 seconds, some of them I didn't even know what they were, like sl slalom and <laughs> do a 360 and do some burnout. What does that mean? I don't know. And you have 60 seconds to do these things and if you can't do them, it just fails you and you can't access the rest of the game. Are you saying you never got past that? I never got past it. <laughs> and I don't know what is beyond it still. <laughs> Maybe there's this amazing game behind it. Maybe you can get out of the car. I don't so think you can. So what was the other mode that you were playing? Just sort of like... It was just like drive a, a car around an empty city. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is great. This is, is a this is a this is a fun with? game. So either you drive around and have fun, or you can like have a little driving test in a car park. How old were you? That's the game. When you say know. nostalgia, how old? Know, maybe like nine or ten or something. I didn't really have a firm grasp on it. I mean, that garage tutorial is is like famous. Is notorious for yeah. being one of the most ridiculously difficult things. And I'm sure ever. I'm sure I had conversations in the school playground with people saying. Well, how about this driver game then? Everyone's going, yeah, there's that weird car park bit. And then someone's just like, yeah, I've completed it, mate. Finished that. You go, have you, have you, Richard? Have you really finished that? <laughs> what's, what's past it? Well, just, just stuff in it. You haven't done it, Richard. <laughs> just You're just lying. A world, no one you? knows what's behind the, the mystery car park level. <laughs> so uh, I don't even know if I could do it today. It's, I still don't know what after the things I have to do. And just well, a very angry a man up. that's just shouting at you all this the time. This sounds like something we should do. I'd like to. We should all have a go at we the driving. Yeah, yeah. I really want to dive Let's in. Let's see how hard it, it is. It is a classic. It's one of the most famous difficult bits in video games, I think, just ever. In the history of the medium. <laughs> well, it's it's definitely it makes me feel a bit better. Feature before, and I've seen it on YouTube. Um, I've never played it myself, and it is. I've seen people doing it. Like, it looks insanely different. But I, I didn't care it was so hard because I had this amazing free roam mode where you just drive around San Francisco, an empty San Francisco, kind of a bit fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's no objectives, no missions. Just driving, the same car. Just, it's called driver. What, what do you want? Driving around without your license, wheel. I can't believe it. <laughs> Illegal. Okay, so my entry is a kind of a game that I've actually been playing since I was a kid, but I kept on jumping in and out of it. And that is Puyo Puyo games. So for this example, I'm going to say Puyo Puyo Tetris, as that's what sort of brought me back into the whole kind of game stuff for it. Rosie said another game, and we're all just like, <laughs> Puyo Puyo, Puyo, Puyo well, so there was a PS4 release called Puyo Puyo Tetris and so you guys I've know played that. you've played that you did uh -huh. it on a one on onesie didn't you uh -huh. Dave yeah um, but so you got Tetris everyone knows Tetris you know good old lad Tetris and then Puyo is when you've got like two blobs of different colours and you need to match them to the same colours in order for it like if you get four colours of the same then it goes and you want to build up chains in order to basically... So if you're fighting against someone, 
if you build a chain of Puyo chains and stuff, I'm saying chains a lot, <laughs> then uh, the other players are gonna rank up from like rocks and if they, like Tetris, if they go above the border, then they've lost and you've won. It's... I know what you're talking about. You know, it's am I explaining simple. it well? Yeah, yeah, not really, no, but it's just a puzzle game. It's, it's just, just a happy puzzle game. game. Imagine Tetris, but it's colours instead of blocks. You have to match colours. Yeah, That's match colours and they're happy little blob type things. I yeah. mean, okay, did you, uh, you could play it on the Sega Mega Drive Classics uh, collection on PS4. Have you done Mean Bean Machine? Me what is working? <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, you can't come in here and make up games. I get, oh, mean Bean Machine is fantastic, but I am... Look, at the end of the day, I am not very good at them. <laughs> I love them. I love them to pieces and I love playing them. And I've got a friend who is like... He's one of those obsessed Tetris and Puyo players. Like, I think he's put... One of those guys. One, I think he's put <laughs> over 200 hours into Puyo Puyo Tetris. Wow. And he's got it across multiple platforms, all of them being probably on average 70 hours delved into. Uh, he's wow. And like seeing, at first I, I was always like, oh Puyo, I think I'm okay with that. You know, I played Mean Bean Machine as a kid and the rocks went yeah, and all that stuff, it was great. <laughs> and then I just start playing Puyo Puyo Tetris and I just got completely obliterated. And then even seeing like online players, you've got the, like the proper pros for them. And you're just there, you know, having a nice jolly old time, like, yeah, I'm enjoying Puyo, look, I've got one chain of four there and I've got hardly any bricks. And then while the other person's stacking, they just build up a mass, so they get like the blue four blobs, then it's the green floor blobs, and they've organized it so that you can get chain after chain after chain. So you can go from like having a nice simple line of colorful blobs, and then suddenly you've got these rocks that just build up and you're going all the way up to the top of the box and you're dead. And that's it, you're completely obliterated and you're done. It's like even like with advanced Tetris players, like they always look at what pieces are coming up next and then they can plan like, oh, I'm going to prepare this piece for that. And then with Puyo, you see what two colored blobs you've got coming up and then they just organize. I don't know how they do it. And they're really quick as well. Like in those games, you know, like how in Tetris, for example, they go down like, you know, pretty slowly and you can speed it up or you can do a solid drop if you want to. Like a block could just go shum. Well, these guys, like the professional players, every single move is a shum. Like, it's as if it just flashes before you're like, you're just there saying, okay, I've got a green and a red. Let's see, where can I put this? The other player has done like six shums in that time. <laughs> six shums. Uh, yeah. The official, the official <laughs> That's the measurement of how good you are. It's what the measurement. The shums? All the shums. And, but I... Am... see commentary on eSports. That's eight shums in a row. Shum. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see 10 shums. It's on a 10 shum string here. Oh my goodness. Really. <laughs> Stop but, saying shom, I'm going to put it shom time. <laughs> <laughs> S-H-O-M. What was that, shom? <laughs> but, S-C-H, um, I think. S, probably. S-C-H-O-M. Yeah. Shom. But it's just, I love Puyo games, I find them really relaxing, and I always pick my favourite fish character, who always shouts and screams, he always goes, Tetris! And stuff like that. He's amazing. I always play as him, and I've actually got better at Tetris over the years, and I'm actually really, especially with Tetris Effect, I've got really good at that, I think. Well, not as good as other players, but I'm at a medium level. But Puyo, I still absolutely... How many absolutely... shoms are we talking? What, for Tetris? Yeah. How many shoms out of 10 at Tetris Effect? Tetris Effect, I don't go shum, I go like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, like so, right. oh, so you're, you're only at like, You're not in the shum. Yeah, like, yeah, like, so it's not... I don't see a piece and I go shum, there it goes. It's, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like I see a Tetris piece... I like quickly move it around and then I can quickly push it down These rather than like official difficulty levels. Yeah, yeah. Tetris <laughs> hardest <laughs> difficulty level is Shom. Yeah. Medium difficulty is Niao. What yeah. would Easy be called? What would Easy? Bloop, like, bloop, 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 yeah, bloop, like bloop, uh, yeah, like eh, eh, Niao and Shom. <laughs> yeah. I think Tetris. bloop, bloop, bloop. But, no, know, that's like, yeah, like that's bloop. beginner. Right. That's that's, under, that's like the that's tutorial. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh god, I'm crying. But yeah, Puyo, absolutely love it to pieces. Mean Bean Machine, love it to pieces. You should all play Mean Bean Machine on the Sega Mega Drive Classics Collection because it's great. And just, I'm just not good at it. <laughs> 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 really? I'm all right. I'm all right. Shom. Shom. I can't help but think of like a real football team that have got Dave in for a manager. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going, so, so Mr. Jackson, what are you going to bring to the team? And he's going, well, I don't really know football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be more like I'll have a look at the team sheet and it'll just be names and I'll go, yeah, but what's what's their overall rating? <laughs> <laughs>
Like, yeah, Steve's broke his leg. Where are the numbers? Yeah. But Steve, you're a 78. If Steve's a 78. We're going to have to... Chuck him so in. Just hot. <laughs> just hot. I'll just sim the next few matches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Dave, you could probably be Man City manager with that approach and they'd still win everything. God, I really hope this weekend's results don't ruin that joke. Anyway, let us know your own games you're bad at but that you love anyway in the comments. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and hit the notification bell to make sure you know instantly when a new Tuesday checklist goes live. They're every Tuesday. See you next week. For the players.